you want to hear the where that number comes from? I do. Yeah. Okay. So the the uh, the original issue is simply the like, you know, some things are loud and some things are quiet. Right. Like the classic dilemma of I'm watching a TV show and then an ad comes on and it's three times as loud and you're like, oh my, I got to turn this down. Right. But the worst. The same thing happens with music, right? Um, especially now that we have uh, playlists that are mixes of tracks from different albums, and it was a it was a common complaint of users of uh, various music listening platforms. Not just that, but broadcast television, movies, all sorts of stuff. Right, right. And so there were various committees that did a bunch of research to try to decide, well, how do we how do we solve this problem? It sounds simple on its surface. You're just like, all right, let's let's just you know, let's, we'll blurb. No, okay, everything's fine, <laughs> right? But they had to do a bunch of studies because there's a bunch of little problems that crop up when you try to do this. In fact, can you guess what the original number they came up with when they're like, all right, we're going to standardize on a Luffs level? This is after they invented Luffs. Can you guess what the original Luffs level they thought that ever, all media should be normalized on? And um, EBU still says eventually we should get to it. I mean, is TV's like 23 or 24, right? Negative 23. Yep. Yeah. But they made an exception for music. And the reason they made an exception for music, which was negative 16, we're still not at negative 14 yet. Okay. The reason they made an exception for music is they're like, okay, there's a problem. Um, the converters on these cheap players suck. So if we're shipping music at negative 23 luffs and people have like crappy headphones and a crappy player, or even they bought a, a good player, but they used a crappy DAC you are going to have to amplify it in order to get it to a listening level that you like. Mm. And if it's crappy and you're amplifying it a lot and you have a bad signal to noise ratio, you're just pushing a lot of noise into that line. And it's not a really great situation. So they're like, well, we got we to gotta make music louder so that people that are listening on like portable players or whatever don't have to crank the cheap amplifier on their, on their, on their portable phone or on whatever they're listening to, right? So negative 23 was not acceptable. But then they had even more problems because they're like, oh, you know what? We realize that different tracks on an album are different levels. So we need to come up with a way of normalizing the volume that keeps the relative differences between the tracks. <laughs> right. And uh, they're like, okay, well, if we take the loudest track on the album we neg and we normalize that to negative 14, so there's a little bit of give on either side, then um, we take the value we got. Let's say, okay, it got pushed down by three db right then we just do everything relatively the same so the things all stay relatively the same um distance from each other right right so you have track normalization album normalization media broadcast normalization right all this stuff right but the real the real thing that's scary that is that the is the misinformation that people got from this negative 14 luffs like that's how we got to negative 14 luffs and by the way that's not even standardized like it's kind of they could change at any point it's not really a standard Amazon, that's why if you listen to uh, watch movies on different streaming things for, for video, sometimes you have to turn the volume way up on your amp and sometimes you don't. They're not the same. And right. who knows what they'll be next year. So trying to hit these targets, it's like not going to help you. Also, let's say you submit a track that's too loud. Why I say too loud, I just mean louder than four, negative 14 less, which isn't too loud. There's nothing wrong with that. Look yeah. at all the pop music. It's exactly. all mastered exactly. at negative eight. Right. <laughs> yeah. So let's say you do that. Oh no, they turn it down. That's a, what we call a linear process. It's the same as turning down your volume knob. There's, there's nothing. It doesn't distort your audio. It's pristine. It's just quieter. That's mm. fine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But imagine, think about what happens when you turn audio up. What if you submit a track that's like n way too quiet and they d decide to change the standards? Well, you would have to put a limiter in there. That's exactly right. The peaks start to go over and you have to put a limiter. So the danger is that you're submitting tracks that are too quiet. They can't push them up because they don't want to put a limiter on them because it'll change the quality. Some do. Like there's a mode in Spotify for like louder normalization mm. and they will put a limiter on the track if they push the volume up. But it doesn't by default. So it's just like, but who knows? Who knows what they'll do next year, right? right? What if right. people complain? The whole thing started because people were complaining. Um, so the real danger is submitting tracks that are, that are too quiet. Here's another one. Nobody talks about this. Uh, there's also this whole true peak thing, right? Yeah. And then they also talk about needing peak headroom because. Um, um, oh, uh, if we convert to a lossy format, uh, then you're going to cause more phase problems. That's going to create your peaks going to push higher. Oh, it'll hit a DAC the headroom. They will well, pop. Da, 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 da. First of all, DACs already have headroom. If they didn't, they'd be terrible all the time. So <laughs> that's supposed to be their responsibility. But here's, here's the real kicker. Let's say, let's say that you're worried about two problems. One, they're going to lower the volume of my track because it's too loud. Oh no. We've already talked about why that's not really a problem. Right. 
Two, if they're lowering the volume of your track at 8 dB by like 6 dB to get it down to negative 14, then why are you worried about peaks? It's true. Do you have 6 dB of headroom? <laughs> yes. What's 1 dB going to do if they're going to lower you? Six? It's just like it does. They don't, they don't even match each other. If you're following all the guidelines, you're doing a bunch of stuff that changes the characteristics of your track to please somebody who's going to change their mind at any time and whose advice, if you follow all of it, doesn't even add up. Yeah. Just, they make sense in, a, in vitro, but not together. And, and people will say like, oh, well, you can't control the, the final device, right? So the, the thing that converts, as, as it turns out, MP3s, they don't know about peaks. They store information in a way that, that does not clip. The clipping happens when the MP3 is decoded. Right. So if the MP3 is clipping or the AAC is clipping, it means that the decoder is crappy. Mm. They should normalize it after decoding, and they should have a decoder that decodes into 32-bit. None of that should be your responsibility as a producer or mastering engineer. That's Are you doing this so that like TLC and Vizio can save $2 a unit on TVs? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that, why that shouldn't even be the purview of, you know, yeah. like it's, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy to me. What you should be listening to is if I like my mix, I like how it sounds and I dial the volume up and I like how that sounds because when you push things louder, even if you take a lot of control of the transients, like you, you will hear different things in the loudness. If you like it, that's what matters. Yeah. You're not going to damage it by submitting a track that's too loud. No. You're not going to damage it if you're if you have peaks that aren't like insane like as long as they're, you know, within whatever, give yourself a dB of headroom, give yourself half a dB. You can always convert it to an AC and listen and if you don't hear anything it's fine. Yeah. Like I really think um these these conversations have been damaging to people because they're getting to focus on all sorts of stuff that has nothing to do with how your music sounds. And um that's bad. <laughs> 